Welcome back. This is the Effective English Email Best Practices Lecture. In the Best Practices section, we're going to get into some of the etiquette around email and sending email. And we're going to talk about when it's appropriate to send an email and when it's not appropriate to send an email. So sometimes it's better to just pick up a phone and call, for example. We're going to talk about who should be included on an email and how to include them. So the two, the CC and the BCC. Some general rules about emailing, and then of course, two warnings. Two things to be very careful of when it comes to email. And I'm going to save that to the end to make sure you pay attention through the full lecture. Okay, so when is it okay to email? When the issue is not immediate, it's not urgent, email is generally okay. Right? So you have a leisurely timeline. If you need an answer right away, like within five minutes or even an hour, emails, it's probably better to pick up a phone and call. Now, some organizations, usually a corporate organization where you're dealing with you're emailing internally within the team, so you know everybody's there, you know everybody's in the office and working, you know, it might be okay to send an email if you need an answer, like in the next hour or so. But for other, other situations, you know, that's probably better to pick up the phone call and ask. In the university situation where everybody's on different schedules, uh, you know, if it's really urgent, you better just make a phone call. If the issue is straightforward, in other words, um, you know, it's pretty simple. It's a yes or a no question, or it's a simple decision that needs to be made. Email's really good. If the if you can write the email relatively short, simple, short and simple, um, that's also best too. All right. So on the other side of this, when should you not email? As I mentioned, if it's an urgent situation. If you need an answer right away, if something is happening with an experiment and the, the samples are spoiling or something, you better pick up the phone. <laughs> you know, you better call the lead researcher, figure out what to do about that situation. Sending an email might be too late. Also, I would add to that, you know, if it's really mission critical, if it's really important issue, email might not be the most secure way to handle it, right? Things do happen with email. Emails disappear. Emails get accidentally deleted. Spam folder, right? Your spam folder can collect an important email, right? Uh, if it's really important, um, you know, maybe or even you send an email and then you send a text message and say, I just sent you a really urgent email. Please check. That would be okay, too. If there's any possibility for miscommunication. Now, I'm not just talking about language issues. I'm talking about, uh, you know, something that somebody could get upset about, angry about. You know, with the written word, um, it's easy to take things the wrong way. You might mean something in a completely innocent way that, that, that somebody reads it and they get offended. Whereas if you had talked about this in a meeting, it would have not been an issue at all. Okay. Also, complex situations uh, may require in-person, face-to-face conversations. Now, there's an exception to this. Depending on the organizational culture, the context, the situation, email can actually help make a complex issue more simple. Okay, so I have often emailed somebody, you know, somebody, maybe I've had a phone call with them and we got distracted in the phone call, we weren't always on topic, after the phone call, I send them an email and say, okay, I've summarized the main three points as follows, one, two, three. And for each of those three points, I put a brief description and the action or the decision that needs to take place. All right, so this is a really good way that email can help you to clear up things that are unclear and get you through a complicated issue. Who to introduce? Okay, so uh, who to, sorry, who to include on the email. The to heading is for whoever needs to be directly responsible for this issue. It could be an action, it could be a decision. Right? CC stands for carbon copy, and that means 
people that should probably know about what's happening, but they don't have to get involved directly, right? They don't have to reply. They don't have to, um, you know, there's no expectation of them to you know, reply or be involved. Now, a BCC is kind of a special case, but it's an important one. When you're emailing a large number of people and you want to maintain their privacy, BCC is the best choice. Okay, so as an example, you need to email everybody in your university department. I'm talking administrative staff, professors, and students as well. There could be privacy issue between two students, right? You know, students often are dating each other. They're, they break up, they have fights, they have arguments. There's a new boyfriend that's also a student. There are, uh, you know, bullies. There's all kinds of issues happen amongst the student body. Lots of reasons why one student might not want another student to know their email address. Okay, so we respect that by just BCCing. BCCing in that situation also avoids a very annoying mistake, which is when somebody accidentally clicks reply all instead of reply. <laughs> okay, so maybe you have sent out an email to the entire department about an event that's coming up and you want to know, you know, the people's, how many people are coming to people for, for people's party. You know, maybe it's a, a dinner and you want to know how many people you're bringing with you, your family and things like that, right? Somebody replies, they reply to everybody in the entire department <laughs> with, okay, I'm coming and I'm bringing my wife and my son or something like that. Nobody else cares. You're just, you know, annoying people with that. So yes, the person that hit reply all did make a mistake. They did make a mistake, but you can help avoid that mistake by properly using the BCC. Now, another way that the BCC is sometimes used is to keep like a supervisor informed about an issue without letting the recipient know that the supervisor is watching. This is an ethically gray area. Some people really don't like this. Some people are offended by it when it happens. Uh, in general, you know, try to just CC people. You know, you can always forward the email later, right? So you get an email from a coworker and you think, oh, this person shouldn't be talking to me like this, shouldn't be talking about this issue. Maybe our supervisor needs to know. And you can forward it to them like that. You can always do that. Um, and then maybe responding, maybe a BCC would be appropriate in that situation. You know, if it's a legal issue or something. Um, but in general, people don't like BCC used for those kind of interpersonal issues. Just be very transparent with people, use the CC, uh, and so on. As a general rule, you know, anyway on email, if you don't want to see it printed in hard copy later on, don't put it in email. So even including personal information like credit card numbers and that kind of thing, you know, email is very insecure. You know, people might see the content of your email completely by accident. The the IT department of your university or your company, you know, they're looking at all this information as they monitor the networks and things. You know, they might see it on accident. They might see it on purpose. They might kind of be snooping around where they're not supposed to be, right? Anyway, it doesn't matter. It just matter. It's possible that somebody can see this information. So, you know, be really careful with it. Save that stuff for in-person or uh, phone calls or things like that. Okay. Uh, moving on from this, some guidelines about writing email. In general, and I'm being very general here, email is less formal than a letter. That's true. Uh, email is not quite as informal as like texting or, or chatting, like with a chat program or something. Um, but in general, it, it's fairly informal. Now, if you're a, let's say you're a a new career researcher. So you might have your PhD or you might still be a graduate student and you're emailing somebody that is not your professor, maybe at a different university, but very high up, maybe an editor of a journal, right? That's a, that's a common one. You need to contact an editor of your journal. That's a very respected, very established person, right? You need to be, you know, pretty formal in that situation. 
Now, email is fast for giving information, sending out information, but it's unpredictable for receiving information back. Okay, so things do happen with email. Spam filters collect emails. Um, you know, emails just disappear as well. Emails just never arrive. Sometimes an email address is mistyped and you never know, but you sent it to the wrong email address. So don't count on it 100%. If it's a really important issue, send the text message. Okay, so you send to the email, then you pick up your phone and you say, you know, hi, Bob, I just sent you a urgent email, please check. That's it, okay? And then Bob knows if he didn't get the email, he can reply right back. Oh, I didn't get it. Send it again. So on and so on. Finally, with attachments, you know, these days I really like sending a link, sending a download link to the attachment instead of directly sending the attachment. Okay, so uh, sometimes I'm working with people that are working out of coffee shops and things like that, and they're using their phone as their internet connection. So they're on their computer but they've got through the Bluetooth, they're connected to the Wi-Fi through their phone and they're using the data plan. So, you know, they don't want to deal with large attachments and things like that. So some email programs will just automatically download those attachments. Okay. That's, so that's a little bit inconsiderate to send like a 50 megabyte attachment uh, through email. So as a general practice, get in the practice of just sharing the download link. Dropbox is one service that's good for that. There are several other services that you can use uh, for sending attachments. Use whatever you like, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, but again, if you do send an attachment, make sure it's just you know less than five megabytes. Um, even better, like less than one or two megabytes. Uh, otherwise, send that link to share the attachment instead. Alternatives to email, pick up the phone. Really easy one. Send a text message email. Text, text messages are great for confirming. Okay, so you send the email because you don't want to bother the person by making a phone call. Uh, well, text message is kind of similar, right? So you can use the two in conjunction. You can use the text messages for confirmation of the email. Also, for something that is a really complex issue or it's an emotionally charged issue that people are you know, passionate about or angry about, you can send the email rather, you know, don't try to address the issue in the email. Use the email to schedule a meeting. Okay. Schedule a meeting, lay out the agenda, right? Talk about the issue in a very clear, direct way and who should be there. That would be an effective way to use email in that situation. Two warnings. Okay. The thing I warned you about at the beginning, always check who's on the list of recipients especially before hitting that reply all button. Okay. Um, if you're talking about another coworker, which you really shouldn't be doing on email, uh, again, like I said, email's not totally secure. People accidentally see emails. People f secretly forward emails to other people. You know, just don't put it down if you don't want it to be, maybe see it on paper later, right? But it's also good just for knowing who around you is informed on the topic, right? So if you get an email from your boss about an upcoming conference, uh, it could be useful to know who else knows about this conference, right? They might be able to help you if you need help, you know, getting pamphlets printed or something else. You can say, you know, hey, Brenda, um, for that conference next week, uh, I really need some more pamphlets made up. She's already knows about it. You know she knows about it. It saves you time. You don't have to explain everything that's going on. And again, email does just disappear sometimes. So follow up, especially if it's an important issue. All right, so to summarize, we talked about when it's appropriate to send an email and when it's not. We talked about the rules for you know the two, the CC, the BCC, as well as who you should include, general etiquette, and then my two warnings, two things to be really careful of when you're using email.